we do have a lot more boys here than girls. We have about two thirds boys to one third girls. And that's really because um, we have a very successful girls' school very close by. So there is a bit of a sort of gender imbalance within the school. I was involved in feminist discussions and debates in the 1970s and 80s. I suppose I came into being head of a mixed school knowing that I needed to ensure and protect the girls within the school, but also trying to ensure that boys don't put girls down and behave in a way that would be appropriate towards women. Brandon, best look. morning, Aisha. When I first arrived, I think there was a lot of suspicion about me being a woman head. Some people in the community would assume it would be a man in this position of status and, and power. Could you come at the end of the day? I think I had to learn to accept that and adapt that, and 16 years later, I think they're just about accepting me now. And is that jacket school uniform or not? When I first arrived, there were girls who basically saw themselves as being in education until they got married at the age of maybe 16 or 18. That happens less often now. A lot more young women seem to be having higher aspirations for themselves. We've got PE at the moment. Right. In Swanley, for PE, we have separate classes for boys and girls. Right. Information. OK, so they can let me know tomorrow, just for my assembly. I just want to make sure I've got enough of the girls represented in the achievements as well, because it's the basketball that they've done really well in this year. Uh, and the girls netball. Yeah, girls netball. They've done really well, haven't they? OK, morning, girls. Going on up here. Because we have fewer girls, we have some all-boy classes to ensure that the girls are in a majority in the mixed classes. For girls to be in a small minority within a mainly class of boys, they could become swamped. The feeling is that if they're in a bigger group of girls, it will give them more confidence to participate in a lesson. Women are created for no other purpose than to serve men and be their helpers. Right, Dan, what do you think? Do you agree or you disagree with this comment? And then I want you to stick your post notes on the page, please. Okay. I disagree with that because I think men and women are both equal. I said women are capable of doing whatever men can do. Okay. Ms. Anu had said, because all women should have equal rights, they can do the same job as men. Thank you very much. The results of our girls are very good in Swanley. They're just as good as the results of girls in a single-sex school. So we're very, we, I think that it shows that it's actually working, our, our philosophy of keeping the girls in a majority in many lessons. I would say since I, because I've been here 14 years, the confidence of the girls has increased dramatically in that time. They have an equal say in the classroom, they have equal power in the classroom and if, they, if we didn't have that situation we'd only have two or three girls in each class and I think that would really seriously disadvantage them. I was saying I think there's been a real sort of shift in aspirations of girls and where they want to go and what they want to be and much higher ambitions now from uh, the girls than possibly 10, 20 years ago. Before, ladies were expected to be housewives and stuff and they didn't really have much say in where they were going and now we do. I have a feeling I want to do psychology because I'm quite interested how the mind works. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what do you want to study? Um, I want to be a policewoman, but I don't oh, know what to study. Um, I want to become a QC. What's that? Um, Queen's Council is like really, really top barristers. Um, try to get into medicine. To be a doctor. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, anyone else in your family a doctor? Oh uh, no, I try to be the first. I'm, I'm thinking of becoming a sociology teacher. Uh huh. In Tower Hamlets. Hello. 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 Hello.
within the school community there's such a variety of aspirations and expectations that girls bring to the school that I think I've learnt a lot more to work with the girls from where their starting point is rather than from trying to have an extreme ideology to move the girls towards and, and that's been a, a good journey. Right, is any one of you going to tell me which book they're reading at the moment and why they like it? Um, I like this book, Carl, uh, Forever Rosie. I read this book, Sapphire Angel. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's really nice. Um, I see my role much more as a facilitator now for young women to go in the direction that they want to go in at the speed that they want to go in. Good. And you read a lot, do you girls? Do you read yeah. when you get home as well? Yeah. yeah. OK, anything else that you feel that we could do at Swanley to make your lives as girls better? Why can't it be a common room? Like but, for, yeah, so an in, what you're saying, an inside space for girls yeah, to go room, if they chose to. Yeah. And what happens in that common room? I mean, they can do whatever they want. Like. What do you feel about being girls in a mixed school? I don't think that's really a problem. It's OK. It's like we've been here for God knows how long. Yeah. And you get used to it. So you don't even sort of notice it Yeah, now. we don't notice it. We're just there We're and just the doing. ones that speak to us, we talk back mm -hmm. and it's fine. Sometimes it's like the guys liven it up. It's a bit entertaining. Bit. It's better to have them there than not to be there. Because they look at things in a different yeah, way. Yeah, and, and you use it. It's like you get new ideas. Do they help you with your learning song? Yeah, they do. Okay. Would any of you think you might have preferred to have gone to an all-girls school? No. Definitely. No. I would absolutely hate to be in an all-girls school because boys are obviously a lot more different to girls and sometimes it's quite insightful just working with them and the way they think... I make them sound like aliens, but they <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things about girls that they just think is so pointless. Like, oh, why do mm -hmm. girls argue about little things? And, you know, things like that. And sometimes it's just interesting. It makes you think about how you are. Hands down and listen up now. So you're going to have an opportunity now to design your own phone. You've come up with some great ideas. So this is totally your phone now. There are disadvantages, I think, to having all boys groups. Um, the girls tend to bring a calmness to lessons um, and the social skills that they tend to have by the time they've reached secondary school, just being a bit more mature, tend to, um, if you like, infect the boys in the mixed classes. As a teacher, I think in the boys only groups, we actually spend quite a lot of time teaching social skills and group skills and how to work with each other in a, cl uh, in a group politely. Um, and giving them the vocabulary to actually do that to a certain extent as well. Do you prefer all boy classes or mixed classes? I prefer mixed, because you know, if you go out of school, there's going to be females all around. You're going to have to talk to them. <laughs> it's not like you can you know, ignore them and walk away. You're going to have to talk to them. But would you say there's a difference with the way you talk, with the way you act and things like that? Sometimes, because when you're just around boys, you just do what you want to do. But if there's girls around, you're kind of embarrassed, you know, yeah. if they're going to do this and In the beginning, I found it hard because uh, I was embarrassed not to show myself up. Uh, I might do something embarrassing and they might laugh at me. You were really shy. I was really shy. <laughs> if there's a girl involved, then do you think the boys are more likely to take the mick out with you than back you up? Yeah, because yeah, obviously it's yeah. a girl, so yeah. they'll be like, you know, <laughs> taking the mick. But that's what's different with girls. If, if a boy was to laugh at me, then I know all the girls would back me up and we start picking on the guy instead of the girls start laughing at me too. We had the policy uh, of having all boys groups to ensure that there's a greater number of girls in some of the other groups. So that through your tutor groups, you wouldn't have been in a very small minority. What do you think of that policy? You know, boys who have been in an all boy tutor group, they're so different to boys who have been in a mixed tutor group. Yeah. And it's so obvious, like the way they talk to girls, the way they are around really? girls. Really? That's interesting. And even though now they're like 14, 15, 16, they still find it quite difficult. Mm. It's like a habit. They yeah. Now some of them still don't know what's right and what's wrong and what's mm. appropriate. Could you basically tell a boy who's been in all boys group? Mm. One yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How interesting, gosh. Because in a sense what you're saying, Aisha, is that you as girls play a significant role, in a sense, in socialising boys. And so 
there's a bit of me thinking, well, is it fair then to have girls in such a small minority having to do that? If you're the minority group, you sort of learn to deal with it and you know, you, how do I, you make your mark and... Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm just interested in, in exploring that a bit further because in a sense, would you feel as strong and as powerful if you were in a, in a smaller minority? I, I, that's my question, really. There's some girls in our class who still don't like, like talking to the boys mm -hmm. or sitting next to the boys or mm -hmm. like even looking at the boys. Mm. And if they were in a much smaller minority, that would be even more difficult for them. The culture in the school tends to be quite masculine anyway. But I would say, because I've been here 14 years, the confidence of the girls has increased dramatically in that time. But I still think that you're kind of always needing to really talk through issues about gender and roles. Um, you know, sometimes have to have conversations with the boys. You just can't speak to a woman like that or you can't say that kind of thing in this, this environment. Sometimes the talk that's uh, not in English can be quite derogatory. Um, sometimes the girls are called prostitute and things like that. Um, and cussing at people's mothers, for example. And I think that unfortunately that tends to just be the patter that happens with the boys when they're in the boys' groups and when they get around the girls. That patter continues and some of it can be quite disrespectful. They just need to have it pointed out to them sometimes because they're just not aware of it. Would you like to come and take a seat? I want to pick your brains about something. Have you got any brains left after all that revision for the GCSEs? <laughs> if you put yourself on one side, because I, there's a lot of me thinks it wouldn't make any difference to you whether you were in a mixed class or an all boys group. But if you think of some of the other boys in your class, do you think any of them would have benefited from having girls uh, in the same class to sort of um, in a sense, show them a different way of acting and behaving at times? Um, basically, in our school, I don't know why, but the girls seem to be better at some other subjects and they seem to like, influence boys to be more quiet and sensible. So it would have benefited in some ways. And some of the boys? Yeah. But it wouldn't have had any impact on you because you're quiet and sensible anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I think um, being in a mixed group is um, really kind of helpful because you get along with um, the other gender as well and also it, helps, it benefits you if, you like, if you're stuck on a particular thing then the, um, everyone's around you to help you. All right, yes. thanks boys. The problem is, is, that, is that if you did find that the boys in the old boys groups were significantly underperforming compared with the boys in the mixed groups, one would then, the, the next logical step would be to create all mixed groups, but that could be at the expense of the girls' achievement. So you have to weigh, weigh up all of this before you make any changes. You always know and feel that you should be doing more than you can do, but then I think that's why, I think that's the nature of people working in education. Um, you're idealists and you have your vision, but uh, you you can never feel that you fulfill that vision, ever. You never feel that you're doing as, as much as you should be.